Hey, it's Joseph here. It took me a while, but I was able to put together this awesome build for architecture, or should I say AEC and interior design and graphic design, that sort of things. But even if you don't do any of those, I think it still is a very well-balanced machine. So I'll disclose all the parts lists for you throughout this video. Therefore, you can see what I have used in here. And all the parts were sent by friends at Asus and they have graciously provided all the parts for me to use in this build. And I really like it. After the build sequence where I describe each parts and the process of building this machine together, I'll sum it up with a couple of benchmarks for you to see how this machine performs against other machines that I have access to. So without further ado, let's cue the build sequence. So these are all the parts that I'll be using today and I'm gonna clear the desk to make some space. And the case is Asus Prime AP201, beautiful mesh case. And the motherboard is Asus Tough Gaming B650M Plus Wi-Fi. And I found a manual, which I'm gonna keep it aside. And I am going to expose a CPU socket to install one AMD Ryzen 7900X 3D. It's going to have enough of course for me to perform all the tasks that I'm gonna throw at, as well as being very, very fast. And the memory of choice is Patriot's Viper series, 64 gigabytes and 6,000 mega transfer. That would be large enough and fast enough for me. Following the same trend of using Patriot's Viper series, I'm using VP4300 Lite, which is going to offer two terabytes of storage. And because this is a M.2 NVMe SSD, it is so much easy to install and it is going to be plenty fast for my use. And doing some peeling. And some more. And here's a CPU installed, 7900X3D. And I need to remove these original brackets on the side to install the all-in-one water cooling system that I'll be installing on top of this. It involves a couple of screws and washers to space them out properly, but soon we'll get this done. I should have really had a bit more on here, but thermal paste is applied. We peel this off for proper contact, secure with the nuts. But I realized that I have put too little of thermal paste, so I've added a bit more. And then I mounted the block onto the CPU. And you want to tighten it in crisscross pattern to ensure no air bubble. And you peel this off. Here I am making a weird face whilst I'm trying to configure all the fans for the radiator. The orientation of the fans are important because I'm trying to make sure all the cables are neat and tidy as well as pushing the air out through the radiator and to the top of the case. And I am disassembling the case here to unmount the power supply bracket out for me to start mounting the power supply. And this is a little side bracket that I need to undo so that I can mount the power supply properly. Continuing the theme of Asus Tough series, the power supply is Asus Tough Gaming 1000G or 1000 watt 80 plus gold certified ATX power supply. Gotta mount that bracket, tighten it up, and then I'm ready to connect some power cables. And then all of these cables now will need to be all managed, but I'll get to that later. Tightening up some of the screws and then connecting the power cable onto the power supply and turn on the switch and do some more peeling. Finally, lower the motherboard into the case and position it properly and also locate the radiator onto the top of the case. And here is where I actually realized I had an issue. The pump of the radiator is now colliding with the power supply cable. So I'm just gonna have to flip it around. So undo what I have just done and then also reorient all the fans so that the cable is onto the other side of the radiator and then turn the whole darn thing around and I can put that back together. And then I'll connect all the fan cables to get them properly organized and then do some cable management here. 
and using the screws, I am securing the motherboard onto the case. And then taking out the PCIe brackets out so that I can mount the GPU on here. This star of the show has quite a long name, so I'm gonna try to say it before the video finishes. Asus Tough Gaming OC Edition GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super with 16 gigabytes of VRAM video card or graphics card. Here I opened up the TF120 fan box so that I can replace one of the case fan that was included to PWM fan. And then I moved on to creating more problems for myself. Reorienting the water block so that I have a bit more tidy hose or the tube connected to the radiator. So I am taking out the water block mounting bracket. And then reinserting it in a different direction and then lowering the block onto the CPU so that I can tighten those things better. I'm not sure this actually helped in terms of the aesthetics, but at least the tube is further away from radiator fans, so there is lesser chance of those two things hitting each other and making noise when they are running. And then I realized I made more mistake, so I'm trying to unmount the GPU so that I can actually connect the front IO ports that are located at the bottom of the case or down edge of the motherboard. So I am connecting those at this moment and trying to configure it in a correct way so that I don't have to remount the GPU again. And whilst at it, trying to do some cable management, I'm keep staring the other side because I'm probably watching a movie. I forget what movie I was watching, but it is at least helpful when you're doing kind of tedious work. And I'm going to show you more cable management to bore all of you to death. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm now mounting the GPU and then securing it properly, then connecting the power adapter to connect the PCIe power onto the GPU. Yeah, I know I'm making a mistake here, but I will correct it, I promise. Flip the case over so that I can expose more cables for awesome cable management. Do you guys also make weird faces when you're focused on doing something? I realized that after seeing this footage. Anyways, I am finishing up my cable management and then dismounting the graphics card yet again. I think I accidentally had the AIO radiator fan header connected to the bottom of the motherboard, but there is a designated spot for AIO fan header, so I have moved it there. Flip the case once more, and then lower the GPU to mount it onto the motherboard. Wiggle it a little bit, connect the power cable then use a screw to secure it and then finally put the side bracket onto the case to hide all the cable mess that you have on the power supply and then put the front panel on to the case also the side panel and I realized the top panel is not secured properly so re-secure that and then close the other side panel or the back panel and then you are done. Actually, no, there are a couple more mistakes to fix. This fan was oriented to have the air intake. So I'm flipping it over so that it is exhausting air out of the case. And here's me posting the system. You can see the logo pops up and it is booting into Windows install system. So I'm closing up the side panel. And onto that mistake that I made earlier, I was using PCIe power adapter. I should really use 16 pin cable here. This cable is specifically made for the GPU to ensure that it supplies enough of power. This side bracket that was on the case 
was hiding all the cable mess, but I could not get this out once the GPU was installed. So I just went around it. The old cable is now out. And then route the new cable into, or I guess the back of the case, push it in, tuck all the access under the power supply, which is now gonna be covered with this side bracket and secure with the screws. Now that all the mistakes are fixed, front panel on, the back, or I guess the other side panel on, and then the main side panel on. And we're done. I've decided to call this machine purple. So the result at the bottom is this machine's result. And on SketchUp, you can see that it was ahead of others that I have tested. And this is the Revit benchmark. And you can see the purple has scored the fastest of all the machine that I have tested. This is the Enscape test and it took the shortest amount to render out the video path. This is a Lumion test. It took the least amount of time to render out a video out of the example project that's included. This is a D5 video benchmark and you can see it score the highest. And all three following tests are for V-Ray, CPU benchmark, CUDA benchmark, RTX benchmark was pretty much on par with this is Blender CPU benchmark and followed by the GPU benchmark. Again, it just crushed all the machines that I have tested. During the benchmarks, I also used the noise meter to kind of see how loud it gets and it was really quiet. So this will now need to be mounted on the side of my desk so that I can use this as my daily machine. So I'll go ahead and do that. But if you found any value inside of this video, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.